Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on... I almost said My Little Pony, but no, we're doing Steven Universe. Season 4, episodes 21 through 26. 25? 25, you're right. Of course I'm right. I may as well be an aquamarine, because apparently they're always right. Apparently they have perfect memory. Okay. Episodes 21 through 25. Dang, those were good episodes. Uh, yeah? <laughs> nice build-up and everything. Very nice. Also called it. <laughs> of course you did. This is apparently my secondary role would be as a sapphire. Probably. <laughs> she is just that good, ladies and gentlemen. So why don't we start with you and your perfect memory? <laughs> At least this isn't as bad as Gravity Falls, where by the time you watch the last episode, you forgot what you started with. Yeah, but this is the exact opposite problem of like, that that was the episodes? They went by so quickly. They did. It's like, we just did a binge watching, right? It's not, that not much time has passed. Yeah, I think, what was that, four episodes? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Five. Hmm. I was trying to minus a one because that there would be 25 episodes if it was from 20. It's the strangest thing about math because 20 minus 25 is five episodes. But when you count 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, that's five numbers. <laughs> yep. So it was so fun. Stephen and Connie with... Mr. Mahesh Warren, because you think, oh, we've had all this serious, serious stuff and dealing with consequences and all of this big, exciting thing. And, oh, yes, now we'll just have a nice, fun, quiet night of... Stakeouts. Stakeouts are boring. Incredibly boring. Because you're just sitting there waiting for something to happen. That may or may not happen. You're yeah. there because something has happened or may possibly happen, and you're there just in case. So we're like, yeah, this is going to be a fun, light, silly episode, and maybe it'll be a gem mutant, and that'll be okay because Steven and Connie are there playing with costumes. It's Mario and Carmen Sandiego. Yes. What's really nice about that is Netflix is getting a new animated Carmen Sandiego series, which apparently is actually supposed to explore the character of Carmen Sandiego which no other series has done. No, but I'm pretty sure it's what we all want. Nobody really cares about the detectives chasing her because Carmen Sandiego keeps escaping. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we wouldn't keep having all these games. Yep. And TV shows and wonderful songs sung by acapella groups. Yes, yes. The the, the animated series has a, had a pretty good song as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you, ProDread, for reminding us. You needed to be reminded? Yeah, I hadn't watched the series in long enough that my brain completely forgot about the intro song. Mm -hmm. And the animated series did also do a little bit of exploration of Carmen Sandiego's past, because she used to work for the agency. We even had an episode with her former mentor. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's been way too long since I've seen that series. Hey Netflix, since you have the rights to the new one, why don't you put the old one on yours? Maybe we'll actually subscribe again. Here's a hint, people. Netflix allows you to unsubscribe when you're done with it. So if you've watched a series and you don't feel like watching anything else on there, unsubscribe. Save yourself some money until another series you want to watch comes out on it. Yeah. Add and subtract. Unlike the cable companies, you are not locked into a contract. No. And Netflix would actually prefer you to come back and leave when you want. They've actually said this. They say, it's better for us and it's better for you. So. Hey, that works. Uh, but back to Steven Universe. Yep. I mean, it kind of made sense for it to be Onion in the park, you know, in Funland. But when Onion said he didn't break the fence, I'm like, huh, I believe him. I knew from the moment when Steven ran into him in the alley and they actually started talking to him and he was freaking out that there was something else going on in that park other than him. Yes, because once it was revealed that Oh, hey, this is people you know, Onion. These are your friends and your friend's parents that should be calmed down. And he wasn't calmed down. And that was a really nice way to build up to the reveal of that new gem. The shadows. And again, the silhouette. What is it with these children's shows reminding me of 
the stone figures from the Unico movie. Hmm. Well, if you're looking for something you will find, as they say, your brain may be subconsciously bringing this up. Maybe we should watch Unico again and do a episode on it. <laughs> uh, but we only got two of the movies here in the U.S. We didn't get the other one. Hmm. Well, we do have the manga. Yes. Which is, like, completely different than any of the movies I remember. Completely and utterly, but back to Steven Universe. Yes. So that was a nice build-up there. And then the whole thing with, oh, a party with the cool kids. and Yeah. Wow, Lars can bake. I am impressed by this. Yeah, I think Lars actually made it to the door, and that's where he was snatched. I think so, too. It's the only thing I wonder about is how did the cake specifically end up in the trash? If you look at it, the lid to the trash can was open. I'm thinking the lid was open anyways. When Lars was snatched, it got tossed out of his hand and happened to just land inside of the container. Possible. Or, considering Aquamarine's constant talk of clean up this mess, if the cake had fallen onto the ground, I would think that she was smart enough to realize that that was a trash receptacle. That's a good point. And I love Steven's plan for the later episodes, which I'll go over. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it was so sad because when you saw the cake in the trash, you really thought that Lars just gave up, which was so sad because even Sadie was having fun. Mm-hmm. And she got to show off her singing voice again. Yes. Is, I mean, she was feeling so out of place because she was like, yeah, I brought plates. Yeah, sour cream brought soda. You came in above sour cream because he brought soda. You brought plates. You did something practical. And I mean, Lars is finally getting his in with the cool kids. And they liked things that he did. Mm-hmm. Because they're actual cool people. They like who you are, dude. They don't care if you're cool or not. You're the one who's putting the label of cool on them. They just happen to be nice people. And because they have that self-confidence... They come off as cool to people. I mean, they all have their weirdness about them. They just happen to have confidence behind that weirdness, which comes off as cool to people. Pretty much. I mean, look at Weird Al. Pretty much. I don't know why people call me Al. They're just mean. <laughs> and at the end of this episode, when Stephen and Sadie parted ways, I miscounted because I said, and there's two for the Homeworld Zoo, when... Logically, Sadie would have been the next to be grabbed, and it should have been, and then there were three taken. Mm-hmm. But she hadn't actually been taken yet. Yeah, and you didn't count Lars at that time. No, I said, and then there were two, Onion and Lars, because Lars never showed up. Hmm. I wasn't counting Sadie. Hmm. Sadie would have made three, but she hadn't disappeared at the end of the episode. But by the same logic, Onion hadn't disappeared, but technically, at the end of the first episode. Well. Both of them walked out of frame and then you saw the silhouettes. Yes. And we didn't have that with Lars, so it was left more open to interpretation. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I miscounted. And I don't think they were really taking them back for the zoo. I think it was slightly different. I think Diamond is using the ploy of taking them back to the zoo for the other Diamond, but she actually has her own idea of what she wants to do with these people, especially since she's been probably looking over the reports. Now that these suspicious things are starting to happen? Yes, well, I'm sure she's looking over the reports, especially since her Peridot went rogue. Mm-hmm. But one of her Peridots. Yes. One of her many, many Peridots, apparently. But it makes a good ploy, you know, for Yellow Diamond to be doing this for Blue Diamond. But there has to be an ulterior motive, because otherwise, why just grab these specific humans? Or are these gems thinking that when they sent um, Aquamarine and Topaz, were they thinking that these were the only humans on the Earth? Hmm. The ones that Steven listed off. Because Peridot kind of had that impression. Human, are there others? And that's when Steven started naming people off, which made it into the recording, which they took as a list. Hmm. Because Aquamarine was thinking of them as various subspecies. Hmm. Because... When she found out Connie's name, she went, I found a Connie. Yeah, but they don't think names of people are names. They, I don't think they think of it as the same way we do. Right. She was probably just thinking that they were a list of things. Not even a list of people, but a list of things to find. So there's a Connie. I'll get a Connie. 
Whatever a Connie happens to be, if it's called a Connie, I will get it. Exactly. But all the gems share the same name. Every aquamarine is called aquamarine. Every peridot is a peridot. Every pearl is a pearl. But they're all gems. So these are all humans. So anyone named Connie would have worked. Anyone named Sadie would have worked. Anyone named Lars. Question is, why does every... One always come to Beach City. Yeah. Keep Beach City weird? Apparently. And I hope Ronaldo's rash is clearing up. Yeah, I was kind of worried about Ronaldo because, like, was he one of the people who got kidnapped? Well, now we know he wasn't because he wasn't on the list. And that fun thing of, I'm looking for my dad. Chimps don't have dads. God, this girl's weird. And then that whole thing with Connie that kind of gave it away. I'm not looking for your dad. I'm looking for my dad. And it was specifically what she was saying as she was walking away while Stephen was semi unconscious. Mm -hmm. That did it for me. It's like, oh, she's looking for a person named my dad. So she's probably looking for Stephen's dad. Because that would be the only dad figure that the gyms have had any recent contact with or experience of. Mm-hmm. That also reminds me, I really like how Steven's flashbacks worked for um, when he was going over all the places Onion may be hiding. They were like a slideshow. I was thinking more like the picture viewers. Yeah, that's kind of a slideshow in and of itself. It's just they happen to be 3D. Yeah, and what was it called? Magic something? No, that's the posters. Viewfinder? It's yeah. The viewfinder. Viewfinder. Had those. Those are always fun. Mm -hmm. Back before you could have moving pictures in your hand. Or look at a screen and have a 3D image pop out of it. You would pop in this little reel with pictures on it. Ah, uh, paper disc, really. Yes, with little cutouts. Two images slightly different to make it look 3D when you look through the viewfinder. They actually brought those back. You can slap a phone in it now. Yeah, they actually use Google's cardboard design to make a viewfinder that you can actually stick your phone in. And you can actually download a viewfinder app and look at all the old viewfinder images using your phone in 3D. <laughs> Just in case you're feeling nostalgic. It also had new stuff for um, younger kids, too. Hmm. Since it's newer technology using a phone, hey, the kids like it. Yeah, and I wasn't quite expecting Steven's tactic for getting everyone free of the Topaz fusion. Well, I thought of it immediately when I saw how the technique worked for the Topaz people. I was like, getting Steven into that would be a good idea because he could just go bubble and poof. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking bubble. I was thinking he was going to, like, interrupt the fusion because he's standing right in the middle of it, which was a good position for the bubble. Also, a nice comedic thing that he was basically Topaz's butt. I thought it was, like, more his mid-back. Also, it's kind of interesting how it's Lars and Steven that are stuck on the ship. Yes, because Lars couldn't get his courage together and ran off. So he's hiding on the ship and Steven is willingly on the ship in the hopes that this means that Homeworld will leave Earth alone. Mm -hmm. Not likely, no. Yeah, very much not so. Especially considering that all of the gems on Earth are going to figure out how to go into space and get Steven back. Yeah, I'm thinking they're going to talk to Lapis and... Peridot? Yeah, because they have more experience with the more recent gem tech. Mm hmm And Lapis actually flew all the way to Homeworld from Earth. Yeah, so that's going to be a thing. Hmm. They could also figure out a way to repair the Homeworld teleport, because we haven't talked about that for a while, and Peridot knows how to repair it. Well, Peridot used those little machines to repair it. I don't know if she could do it without the machines or if she has the ability to replicate those machines with Earth tech. I'm pretty sure that they would figure out something and that's probably the best way for them to get to Homeworld. And to get there quickly. Because as soon as they get there and rescue Steven, they can teleport back and destroy it again. Because they're not going to let that go. Nope. Is I was almost expecting it to be Lapis at the door somehow. Mm -hmm. I expected Lapis to have shown up and then pinned that thing to the ground or grabbed it with the water but no alexandrite yeah you guys royally ticked off the crystal gem trio because they went full out four-way fusion also i love that line of we should split up steven ruby and sapphire no i meant into teams oh and then he's like garnet 
you're one team. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, Garnet, you're with yourself. <laughs> Pearl and Amethyst and Connie and me. That's a pretty powerful little gem, too. Magic wand. Interesting. Yeah. Also pretty hardcore. Her gem is a prison tattoo. <laughs> That's an interesting thing to bring up. What? It's a teardrop under her eye. That's old school prison tattoo for how many people have you killed? So what else do you want to go over on these wonderful episodes? <laughs> that it was interesting how empty the town was with just those few people missing. So, I mean, we saw Barb, we saw Mr. Smiley, we saw Sour Cream, but the boardwalk looked deserted. And so we had the show giving us this image that maybe more people are missing because we're not seeing people. We even heard Sadie's mom going, I'll check for where mail's piling up, see if there's any more missing people. Mm -hmm. To implant even more in the viewer's mind that there may be more people missing. Well, with the earlier theory and the earlier information of the diamonds talking about doing more to stock the zoo, makes sense. The more you grab, the better breeding stock base you have. Yeah, I don't think they would be thinking about that, because I don't really think they know how humans work. Not really. I mean, Blue Diamond probably has more knowledge than Yellow Diamond, since she keeps up the zoo, even though she's not really there. But still, they have some knowledge because they've kept the breeding going on all those generations with the captives. So yeah, especially with how the machine picks, but maybe only the machine knows and they don't. Entirely possible because it's very much an automated process. But with the episode title for the finale... Mm -hmm. I'm my mom. Yeah, you knew that Steven was going to say that phrase to the Homeworld Gems. Because there is nothing that ticks off the Homeworld Gems more than seeing Steven as Rose Quartz. Because Jasper went insane. Yeah, and Jasper figured it out relatively quickly. This gem was like, Steven? Steven? What's the Steven? 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 The Steven's interesting. And then... Oh, Rose Quartz! Well, apparently you don't send Aquamarines to fight, because Jasper actually faced Rose Quartz in battle, mm. and so would recognize the gem much more quickly. Especially since all gems of that type apparently are back at the zoo. Mm-hmm, and were supposed to have been shattered, but none of that would have been part of Aquamarine's briefing. She had a list and a destination. Yep. It was basically a scavenger hunt. You need one of these, one of these, one of these, and one of these. It was a shopping list. Pretty much. I need to pick up some Connie's and some Stevens. Maybe a little bit of Lars. Do we like Lars? Are we running low on Lars? I can't remember. Yeah, but you know, I don't think Steven was actually on the list. Are you sure? Mm, that's a good point. Though I hear Sadie's are good this time of year. Mm-hmm. And going backwards a little bit, there was an actual grocery list on Lars's wall hmm. in the kitchen. Also, I want to try that cake. Both of them. Hmm. I wonder if there's an actual recipe for it somewhere. Probably. If not their actual one, there's got to be something like it on Pinterest. Yeah. Though I do remember a couple of Steven Universe shorts that actually had him doing actual recipes and stuff. Hmm. Interesting. And it was too bad because they were so close to escaping because they could deal with the topaz. Oh, uh, that's just brute force. We can deal with that. But no, Aquamarine and her magic wand, which is powerful enough to stop even Alexandrite. I have a feeling she couldn't immobilize Lapis. Because even if Lapis was immobilized, I have a feeling Lapis could still control water. She could probably still control water. So that part would still work. Also, if you look... I don't know if this would work in Jim Cannon at all, because if you look, Jasper and Topaz both kind of had similar designs and their grunts. Aquamarine obviously is blue because she's Aquamarine, and Lapis is blue because she's a Lapis Lazuli, but they both have the wing thing going, mm -hmm. and they're not solid feather-like wings. They're more amorphous water wings, so they could have a similar type of power. Where Lapis is specifically able to control water, where Aquamarine's ability is focused through the wand. Though this brings up another thing. What Peridot said, I don't think any of the modern gems can actually use powers. They actually have to use 
technology to do things that are like powers. So if you can take that ribbon wand away from her, she doesn't have any powers. Just like how if you took away the arms and legs from Peridot, she lost her power until she figured out how to use a new one again. Yes, because she couldn't do anything without the lemon hancers. And when we saw Jasper fight, she had that extra helmet that went on. I think Jasper is an older gym too, so she still has the special power of a weapon like that. Yeah, Jasper is an older gym because she is an earth gym. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking all these modern gyms can't do what the crystal gyms can do. Yeah, because if you recall, Lapis is a very old gem too because her stone was imprisoned in that mirror for so long. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking all the crystal gems have an advantage because they are classic. They don't have to worry about these extra technologies. And all the newer gems are probably bred to not have these powers to make them easier to control. Or as resources become more scarce, there's less material to put into the manufacturer of new gems. That's a possibility too. But I'm going for the, the one of they're being manipulated and bred to be easier to control. I mean, think about it. If you have all these soldiers underneath you who have enough power to defeat you, and you are controlling them through not very good methods, like we can tell by the flashbacks, it's better to have them as weak as possible. They're still strong enough to fight for you, but fight for you in such a way that you can take away their power when they disobey you. You can just destroy their weapons and suddenly, oh, they can't fight anymore. True. But if the powers are innate, built into them, that's kind of hard to do. Only if they know they have powers. So oh. they could still be created having the powers, but never, no longer taught how to use them. And if the diamonds tell the gems that only older gems have the ability, they won't look for it with them themselves. Because most of what we've seen of homeworld gems is they don't seem to have much um, initiative. Yeah, and I think I know why. It probably happened after a rose quartz shattered a diamond. Oh, yeah. That's when, yeah, this is a bad idea. Let's, let's make our soldiers stupider and have less power. And if we give them powers that only we control, that's even better. Yes, but at the same time, they didn't go around and get rid of all the old gems because Jasper was still around. And most of the quartz at the zoo were the earth quartz like amethyst yeah but they're all working at the zoo yes a place where they're out of the way we don't have to worry about them yes also they're a bunch of knuckleheads mm -hmm. i'm saying they didn't get rid of them and jasper was kept very close probably because she was a very strong gem and very loyal that's the key if they're loyal and they're strong, they were probably left alone. But if they were unloyal, they were probably destroyed or bubbled, just like the Rose Quartz. Very possible, because with the shattering of Pink Diamond, I'm sure that all of her gems were reassigned to the remaining diamonds. Mm-hmm. Which I think are three. I think there's three other diamonds. The two we know of, yellow and blue, I'm pretty sure there's one more diamond. Because I think there was four diamonds in total. I'm pretty sure there were five. Can I have to look at, there's an image of all the diamonds. Yes, when they go to the moon mm -hmm. and Peridot's talking. But I only seem to remember blue diamond, yellow diamond, and pink. I don't remember any others. Yeah, pink, blue, yellow. We have to have white because white is the traditional diamond. And if I recall correctly, there is such a thing as a black diamond. I mean, four makes sense because deck of cards, also four to make a basic diamond shape. But I still want to say five. Well, we can always look it up later. Mm hmm So that would be another thing to have taken away all their forces. And also, this goes back to what we said before about the gems that came to Earth from Homeworld. The weapons they had were specifically to take out gems. So at any other point, has there been war between the diamonds? Hmm. I don't know. I hope it gets explained, especially since from what we understand and what the creator of Steven Universe has mentioned, season five is possibly the last season because apparently she doesn't know what to do after season five. So season five is as far as she has planned. That doesn't mean the series will end. If it's popular, 
it will keep going. Dragon Ball, cough, Dragon Ball. Maybe. Gravity Falls was very popular and it still stopped, because the storyteller knew exactly where he wanted the story to go. And so does she. The real question is, she sounds like she's a bit iffy about stopping it there because she like, I don't know, I've come up with it till this point? I may come up with more? She just doesn't know. Well, that's the difference, is the Gravity Falls creators had a definite ending in mind. Rebecca Sugar has plotted out to X point. That doesn't mean that she won't have any other ideas after X point. She just doesn't know where the story's going after that point. That's as far as she wrote it in her head. It doesn't sound like she has a conclusion based on the phrasing. It sounds more like that's as far as she's written it in her head. Not that it's ended, but that there were like too many branching paths and she didn't know which way she wanted to go. Hmm. Oh, well, we'll see at the end of the season five. Yes. So should we wrap things up? Yes, because we can't really go any further. I mean, so much of this is speculation. Okay, we saved all but one of the humans. The most scaredy cat of all the humans that was captured is the one that's on the ship with Steven, who apparently will probably not be any help considering he couldn't get his nerve up to help Sadie. You know, he's probably going to be the key, though. He will be the one thing that will throw everything off and either give Stephen an advantage or talk to Stephen about it and give Stephen the courage or the idea of how to do things or kick Stephen in the butt going, you're an idiot, Stephen. You're a moron. Be smart. Be the Stephen I know. Yeah, because the fact that it's Lars is important, but we've seen Lars repeatedly be a coward. I'm sorry, if he can't pull it together for Sadie, then he's going to pull it together to save his own hide, which means helping Steven. We'll see. You know, he could be one of those people who just changes in the right moment. That's what I'm saying. We've seen these previous things not be enough motivation. We'll see. We'll see. So yeah, I, I can't wait for season five. It sounds like it's going to start relatively soon. I can't remember the exact date that I saw on the wiki, but the episode title's already up, so someone knows about them. Yeah, well, we're a little late getting to these ones. I mean, you told me a while ago that there were a few episodes up, and then by the time we got to it, the season was wrapped up. Yeah, I knew about three episodes, told her about it. Then by the time we actually got around to watching it, there were two more episodes added. Which, considering the buildup over the course of the episodes, was probably better for us. Though I don't know if it was better for you gentle listeners, if you're still here. <laughs> and then there was you going... Dang it, that's the end. Uh, well, I, like I said, I can't wait for more episodes. I can't wait for the next season. I really hope there's more after it, but I'll be okay if things get wrapped up nicely at the end. Though there's going to be so many questions left unanswered. Entirely likely that there will be, but I'd rather have a story that concludes in a satisfying manner than some of those drawn out endings or where they just end abruptly and leave you going... Where's the resolution? Yeah, then there's those series that won't end in a bad way. Cough, Simpsons, cough, Spongebob, cough, Spongebob. Oh, wait, I did that in reverse. Cough, Spongebob, cough. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, we realized this after we finished recording the part you just listened to that we forgot to talk about the first episode about Steven finding that tape. Apparently, Steven Universe has some stuff in common with Gravity Falls that by the time we get to the last episode, I've almost completely forgotten the first episode. We completely skipped talking about the episode where Steven is analyzing his mom's video and with Lion's help, finds a video made out to Nora. So, yeah, we're going to add this little part at the end here. So, yeah. Okay, for Lion. Steven's like, come on, please, please, I gotta find out. Yeah, Steven, at least by the way the writers seem to be writing you, you're only as important as you want to be. You don't have a grand destiny. Yeah, you haven't been pre-scripted. Your mother didn't give birth to you so that you could battle a great evil. She gave birth to you because she wanted you to exist. Because she loved what you would be. She wanted you to be whoever you wanted to be because you had the power to do so. Even though she fought against it, she was still a gem. She had a predetermined job and everything. Everything was already planned for her. Everything was already planned for the other gems. 
The only reason the other gyms could fight against their roles is because Rose Quartz could see that there were other things. That could be done. And that was what she loved about humanity was how it grows and changes. I mean, if you look back at some of Pearl's comments during the Blackout episode that, you know, humans used to be hunter-gatherers, whatever happened to that? That's how long the Crystal Gems have been on Earth. They've seen humanity rise up and change and evolve from, you know, a very primitive state to, well, while still pretty rustic by gem tech standards, a fairly refined society yeah. where the gems, from the moment they come out of the kindergarten, have a set role and a set purpose and nothing ever changes. They're very... I almost want to say permanent, but I'm thinking it's more of a semi-permanent. It's just a very long semi-permanent. Well, they're static. They're stationary. They don't change. And this is why she made two tapes because of the fact that she worked with Greg. She didn't know what Stephen would be. She knew he or she would be part human, and that's it. And they made two tapes because, like most parents, they had a boy name and a girl name. And since even Garnet couldn't predict what Stephen would be, so of course she made two tapes because she wasn't going to be around to say these things. So she had to say them on the tape. And how hurtful would it have been if the only tape Stephen got was to Nora? I mean, he was already hurt by it, even though it was the exact same tape, even almost down to the edits, that the first tape was. He was still incredibly hurt and confused. Am I not the only one? Who's Nora? Where's Nora? Am I not special? Yes, you're special, but you're special because you're you, not because you're part of a grand design and a grand scheme. You're special because you're you. Mm -hmm. Which is another one of those messages they slip in there for us normal watching people. You're special because you are you. You're not special because of some grand design, some plan by your parents, some great scheme of things. You're special because you're you. And that's special because nobody else is like you. For Stephen, more so than anybody else, since there aren't exactly gym human hybrids running around all over the place. I just suddenly remembered the episode where Pearl got a girl's number. <laughs> she gave me these digits. It's some type of code. You got her phone number. That is so awesome. <laughs> I still love how the uh, credits what? and Steven as the voice of reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a really nice episode. A good lead in to the episodes that followed up that you just heard us talking about. But the thing is, it didn't connect directly with the other episodes because the other ones all tied together and this stood slightly apart. So that's our excuse for missing it, and uh, I'm sticking to that. Thank you, and please listen to these previously recorded credits. I promise they're not exactly the same as the ones you listened to last time. And this has been our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 4, Episodes 21 through 25. Make us a part of your universe. Click subscribe. Think Lux's art is out of this world? You can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. Possibly Facebook. Don't put that dollar in the vending machine looking for onion. Put it in Lux's Patreon. Kofi isn't just a Steven Universe character. It's a site for tips. Have PayPal? Throw three bucks our way. Thanks for listening.